Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the video for the top 10 figures released in September. This video is a little bit late because I've been unwell, but better late than never, so what do you say we get started with number 10? Starting off this list at number 10 is Kotobukiya's most recent addition to their Pokemon figure series, this time of Leaf, who's sometimes known as Green. She was the female playable character in the games Fire Red and Leaf Green and has since played small cameos in other games such as the Smash Brothers series and more recently Let's Go Pikachu. This marks her first time in figure form which is not surprising as she's far from a well-known character but she's a welcome addition for Pokemon fans to an already fantastic lineup. Just like all the other figures in this line, she comes with a chosen Pokemon, and Squirtle is definitely the highlight. He looks so cute standing about 5cm tall. The next figure on this list is one that I'm kind of taking a gamble with, as I haven't actually been able to find any photos or videos of the diorama, but as a fan of the games, I had to include the collector's statue from The Walking Dead Definitive Edition of Lee and Clementine. The first game in the series was so memorable with an ending that was honestly heartbreaking and I fondly look back at these two as an amazing pair of characters. Though I can't be 100% sure, from what I have to go on, this diorama does faithfully capture the cell shaded look of the game and I think it does accurately portray the fear and anxiety of living in a post-apocalyptic world. Clementine looks defenseless, but Lee is her protector, and I guess with the final product being so limited to only 100 copies, I really hope this figure is as amazing as it looks here. The eighth figure is not for the faint of heart, and if you have any kind of fear of clowns, it's definitely not for you. But for some horror enthusiasts, the collecting scene has been pretty active lately, and one of the best pieces I can find is also one that I would not want by my bedside table. Tweet Ahead made this Pennywise maquette, and the detail, especially in the face, is chillingly realistic. This is definitely one of the best Pennywise pieces, and again, if you're into that sort of thing, he comes with his trademark red balloon, as well as a slimy tentacle leg and a werewolf hand. You've probably noticed that he's also crouching atop a small coffin, which if you take Pennywise off and remove the lid, inside is a small doll of Richie, and the artist who actually made the doll for the scene in the movie sculpted this one as well. The next figure is part of the Meisho line, which is pretty much the best outcome to a Japanese company like Bandai acquiring the license to Star Wars. They're dedicating a whole line of action figures to reimagining the members of the Galactic Empire and many other characters as feudal Japanese warlords. The line started in 2016 with the release of Boba Fett, and the success has led to Bandai expanding into Western comic book heroes starting with Spider-Man, but later including the likes of Wolverine, Captain America, Iron Man, and even Deadpool. The most recent figure is of a Stormtrooper from the First Order. He comes fully equipped with a katana that can be wielded or sheathed, and also this very steampunk wooden pistol blaster. It's designed to match the firearms first introduced by the Portuguese in the 16th century. I can't help but love how stylized the samurai attire and weapons are. I love feudal Japanese settings and I think for any hardcore Star Wars collector these figures are a must. The next figure is released by Taito, who have been ever impressing me lately with their gorgeous releases of the Queen of Vocaloids Hatsune Miku. This new iteration comes in three alternate variants and pictures Miku relaxing in lounging clothes enjoying a warm cup of tea but still rocking her twin tails. The first two versions are identical aside from one having Miku's beautiful ocean blue eyes on display and the other one having them closed in a happy expression, but the third variant has Miku winking with an alternate colour scheme that basically basically reverses her long blue socks to pink and her pink jacket to blue. Whichever version you prefer, I think all of these figures are stunning and paint Miku in a unique light that's very fitting to her. And also, as with Taito's previous releases, they are extremely affordable and personally I think for the price these figures retail at, they're definitely some of the best pieces you can buy. Starting the top 5 is this 1 7 scale of Ilya from the Magical Girl spin-off series to the Fate franchise. I think at this point it's almost impossible for me to make one of these videos without mentioning at least one Fate figure. Now despite there being quite a few figures from Prisma Ilya, this is the first time she's been displayed idol style from the live event. And and I really have to appreciate how awesome her gold microphone is, as well as her uneven boots and gloves. Apart from that, I'm not the biggest fan of the feathers, like they could just disappear and I wouldn't really care, and they also changed, I guess you call it her flannel pattern on her outfit to a plain pink, but it really doesn't matter that much, she still looks amazing. And Katakawa is also making figures of Kuro and Miyu to go along with 
with her and I think they'll look amazing all displayed together. The next figure is an amazing example of what happens when two of the industry's best figure manufacturers team up to create a joint project. To give some quick history, since 2008, Alter and Mega House have been co-creating figures rather sporadically which usually culminates in around 3-4 to four releases each year. There have been some very impressive figures come out of this project, codenamed Alpha Omega, but there have also been some very average figures in my opinion that likely resulted from the two companies not seeing eye to eye. Their most recent joint production however is anything but average as this incredible figure of Emilia from ReZero can attest. This would be by far sculptor Hane Motokatsu's best work, but I do quite like his melty figure from Shining Hearts as well. Something that both of these figures have in common is they both have adorable little familiars accompanying the main character, and this makes both pieces stand out as extra appealing. The cat puck's pose and position on Amelia's hair is brilliantly placed. Not only does he complement his master, he also appears weightlessly floating, and I love when sculptors are able to achieve this effect. Everything about Amelia is stunning, this is really a fantastic piece, probably the best I've seen of her thus far. While we're on the subject of Mega House figures, they also released this amazing diorama of the Eevee family of evolutions from the various generations of Pokemon throughout the years. I love when multiple characters are sculpted together to form one piece like this. I can't really think of another figure that has this many Pokemon from the same family all collected together, especially not one with the same level of quality. Because the base is surprisingly large, so the characters are far from small. The collection is so bright and colourful, and Eevee looks so cute cute in the middle, it almost seems more suited to be a cake topper than a collection piece, but for Pokemon fans, and especially Eevee fans, I'd say this is a step above the rest. The next figure was made for the ever popular Ichiban Kuji game which relies on winning prizes according to tickets drawn similar to a lottery or a raffle and it celebrates the 10th anniversary of Bakemonogatari. Bandai Spirits chose Shinobu to be the poster girl for the project and set about making two colour variants based on this artwork. The results are these sugar filled carbohydrate kicks for the winners of prize A and I adore these figures. Shinobu is literally holding a gun made partially out of donuts and if there wasn't enough of a pile underneath her, there's some stuck to the back of her hair and feet. She's also in this donut floaty which I've literally seen ones exactly like this for sale online and it's just so classic. Overall I'd say the pink one's a bit more appealing but the black one is cool in its own way. And finally, for the number one spot, the next figure is like a dream to me. It's the first of three announced to be extremely high grade action figures of the characters portrayed in the Dynasty Warriors series. I've been a massive fan of this series and many of its spin-offs and even other games that include the characters from the Three Kingdoms era of Chinese history. I've played and owned almost every game since Dynasty Warriors 2, though admittedly I have missed out on the last three iterations, but from what I have played, I've played them to death. I've sunk countless hundreds if not thousands of hours into the series as a whole, and the characters are so memorable and beloved to me, even crossing over into other universes like Total War or Kessen games. But despite the series now reaching the ninth main installment with dozens of expansions, like honestly, look that up, there are so many, there has never really been any figures or merchandise of the series with a few small exceptions. I remember when I first found eBay as a buying platform, early 2000s, I would go on and search for Dynasty Warriors statues or figures or anything I could find, dreaming for there to be something like this. I did once stumble upon very low quality figures from China, but despite their flaws, I loved looking at them, and I have that very same feeling looking at these. Zhao Yun is the first release from Ring Toys. He's fully poseable with interchangeable hair and hand parts, but the detail on his clothes and armor is godlike. Just like is common with a lot of sideshow releases, his attire is made from various fabrics and the level of detail is just insane. Weapons are a big factor in the game's lore and mechanics and I still remember Zhao Yun wielding his dragon spear as a loyal vassal of Shu. I think he's a great character to start off with from the new game and I'm infinitely excited for the upcoming releases of Zhao Hudun and Zhao Yu. And that was it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Very soon I will be making the top 10 figures in October so stay tuned for that. Apart from that, thank you guys for watching this video, leave a comment down below the figures that you most enjoyed from last month, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.